got to get something going on here. I got to get this working. Somehow, I have to figure it out. A lot of people can access this stuff. I literally drove eight minutes in traffic to get here. Whoosh, boom. Oh, oh man, Isn't that thing. Lord, help me. <laughs> I'm gonna jump on the boat. I'm having a fun day. Fun day and a real surprise day. Wow. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Coleman, the outdoor company. Cooper Tires. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. And Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's Fish in Canada show is about going fishing with an open mind and being ready for the unexpected. Let me set the stage. It's early fall, a time when fish species are about to make some life changes, and sometimes drastically. Lake and speckled trout, as well as Chinook salmon, commence their spawning rituals. Largemouth and smallmouth start their end of season migrations. Big muskies seem to appear out of nowhere and throw on the feed bag. It's a great time of year to be on the water. I'm fishing close to home in one of the many Lake Ontario harbors along the greater Toronto area. There's a bit of incoming water here which should draw some fish activity. I'm here with the assumption that the species list consists of largemouth and smallmouth bass, pike, and since it's late in the season, there's the possibility of brown trout, rainbow trout, and Chinook salmon. Mm -hmm. Although I could troll the area covering it in no time at all, I'm choosing to cast it. That way I can hit little spots that would be impossible to access via trolling. I'll run through my typical hard bait choices, but ultimately want to use spoons, spinners, and maybe minnow baits as my base presentations, as these are great choices for a variety of fish. As for gear, I'll run a long spinning rod as my main rig in case I hook into a beast, and I'm going to go with a relatively light fluorocarbon leader since I'm after numbers of fish and not a specific species like pike. It's a chance I'm willing to take. Got, oh, I think I had one. It got off. What happened there? I'm sure that was a fish. Yep. Wow. Missed him. Hooks are sharp. Razor sharp. Drag set a little too loose, I think. Lost my spoon there. What happened there? It broke my line. I didn't realize it. That salmon opened my snap up, my cross locking snap up. Next cast, I threw out, not checking it like an idiot not checking it, and the spoon is gone. And there's a bunch of overcast skies coming in, it looks like. It's sunny and beautiful morning here right now, but that cloud cover is supposed to come in, and that might change things up too. Maybe the golds, gold patterns. Always remember that silver with the sun, and gold with the clouds and, and overcast. And it seems to work pretty good as a rule of thumb. When fishing in harbors or creek and river mouths where salmon, pike, and bass reside, always try to go on the heavy side of your gear rather than light. Even though the water will probably be clear, it's worthwhile spooking a couple of fish in a day, knowing that the insurance of heavy equipment will ultimately pay off in more landed fish. These areas are notorious for having wood, steel, skegs, and so on. Perfect opportunities for a big fish to wrap your line. I'd recommend starting with 20 to 30 pound braid as a minimum and use only heavy duty cross lock snap swivel combos if you're chucking spinners and spoons. That said, if you're not getting any strikes and you're pretty sure it's due to your heavy line and terminal tackle, then and only then should you consider to go lighter. There's one. Now what am I gonna do here? That's a big fish in amongst boats. Is he gonna come out towards us? Or is he gonna stay in there? Oh, he's coming out, what is he? What is it? Oh, it's a pike. I thought I had a giant. It's a little pike. <laughs> I thought I had a good one. There's a fool, a surprise of the day. Well, now we know there's pike here in Whitby. Not a bad pike. Yeah, you know, that's a bonus fish, I guess you'd call it. Oh, look at his tail, half a tail. That's why he fought only half a fight. That's a fat little pike, man. Look at that thing. Now, I, and I know in here, there's probably, probably a lot bigger than that in here. I'll bet you, Lake Ontario Bays, they have 
They have some monster pikes sometimes. Well, you know what? I lost a salmon, which I'm sure it was a salmon. You know what? That keeps you warmed up. Fun. Bonus. Come on, buddy. Hit this thing. I'm having a fun day. Fun day and a real surprise day, too. I got him. He crushed that thing. Whoa. The beauty of harbor areas like the one I'm in today is the number of game fish species that reside here year round. A trip like this is ultimately not about just salmon or just pike or just bass. It's about setting the hook on anything that's hungry or feeling aggressive. To me, that's the true definition of fishing. I can't tell what it is. It is a pike. Not a bad one though. He's not a bad pike. Uh, he's not bad, but he's not huge. I'll tell you what, if a guy wanted to go pike fishing, he might have found a new pike spot anyways. He's a pretty good fish. Look at that guy, he's got a nice back on him. They don't fight like the summer pike right now. They're um, definitely lethargic when the water is less than 60. See if I can get this guy. I may, net, I may net this guy, folks, just to, he's a little out of my range for, whoa, for putting my hand around him. So I think I'm gonna drop him in a net. Nice. <laughs> oh, no, there we go. You know what, this is the time of the day when these pike are probably gonna rev up. If there's any bass in here at largemouth, they'd do the same thing. It's a pretty good fish. Now this is a pretty good bonus fish here. If you're gonna catch pike, that's a pretty good pike for a bonus fish. A city pike, basically, the city of Whitby. Lake Ontario fish, these fish, this guy will stay probably in this whole harbor his whole life in this little harbor. Uh, not his whole life, but it's for, for half, three quarters of his life. Then if he gets to be a big 20 pounder, maybe they have a reason to go out and, and chase bait fish out in the middle of the lake, but a cool fish. <laughs> That's a nice pike. The, the difference between here and out there is the wind is so strong today that, uh, that that's churning up Lake Ontario. That's flowing into here. There's not enough current. There's a little bit creek out of here that's blowing out, but there's not enough current to go out towards the lake today. So all that wind is blowing everything in. So the dirty water from Lake Ontario that's turned up is all coming in, it's all coming in, but it's staying in that sort of front section. This is the back end of the, of the bay, of the harbor, and uh, the water is a lot cleaner right here. A couple of casts and I already popped a couple of pipes, so maybe I could stay here for a while. I was gonna go home, but the boat launch is like 130 yards away right there. Did you know that the Greater Toronto Area has untapped harbour and creek mouth fishing that almost no one takes advantage of? Take Frenchman's Bay in Pickering for example. It has bass, carp and salmon in the fall, and in early spring, the bay's deep, weedy water produces some of the greatest pike fishing around. The Whitby Harbour, where Pete is slinging his spoons today, is another example of a multi-species honey hole with pike, bass and carp during the warmest months, and browns and rainbows in both the spring and fall. It has a salmon run in the fall as well. Here you can even fish from shore if you don't have a boat. Continuing a little further east, there's the Oshawa Harbour with a rainbow run in the spring, carp, bass and pike in the summer, and the added bonus of chinooks and browns in the fall. This place is heaven for fly fishermen. The harbour and mouth of Bowmanville Creek, just beyond the eastern reach of the Greater Toronto Area, also presents anglers with a multi-species smorgasbord. So, if you live in or around the great city of Toronto, you might be less than an hour away from some marvellous fishing. And these are just four examples. There are many more harbours and tributaries in or close to the GTA. Just another reason to go fish in Ontario today. There's a salmon right there. Look at that salmon. Whoa! What a 15 pound salmon. Just went through there. Oh, I wonder if I can get him. He's all beat up. Where'd he go? Come on, buddy, hit this thing. That would be awesome. I got him. <laughs> I don't think it's him, I think it's a pike. It's a pike. I missed the salmon and got a pike. No. Are you kidding me? It, was a, it wasn't a huge salmon, but it was awesome. It was a nice one. And this dirty old pike hit me. Man, he crushed that friggin' thing. <laughs> he's not even a big one. He's not bad, but he's not very big. That fish is like a summer pike, that guy. <laughs> wow. 
keep him out of the way. He's not bad though. He's got a thick body to him. That's crazy. Man, that fish has come up. I thought, I mean, in the summertime, I thought that was a bass the way he hit. Um, and I'm surprised at this water temp that he come up and smashed it like that, but, but he engulfed it. I am getting so lucky, knock on wood, with this spoon without a leader. He's still ready to go, look at. He's still got lots of vinegar left in him. Wow, he's got like, every hook in him too. Every hook in him. Whoa, that's how you get a hook in the hand if you don't have a good grip on him. That's for sure. Oh, it's not bad. No leader, taking a chance, Petey. Look at how fat that fish is. And there's lots of bait, I'm seeing lots of, you know, I don't know if it's bait or not, but there's lots of little baby bass swimming around in here. Um, I'm sure he's feeding on those, little largemouth, but his belly is really full. That fish is definitely feeding. There's no doubt about it. It's not like he's, uh, he's resting in the fall here. See ya, bud. Man, it's aggressive. That's a really aggressive pike right there. You know what, it's a, one thing about a place like this is, is it's so close to the city to, you know, if, if all these harbors probably have the same thing going on. You know, if they allow you to fish in them, which usually you can get away with, if you're not getting too close to the boats, you're not bugging anybody and smashing baits off the boats, and they don't really, really mind, use your common sense, but it's so close to the city that, you know what I mean, a, a lot of people can access this stuff. I literally drove from the office this morning, eight minutes in traffic to get here. Whoosh. Oh, oh, man, you see that thing? Lord, help me. <laughs> I'm gonna jump on the boat. Still six feet of water here, that's crazy. Oh, that's a salmon, I saw him. Oh, behind us. <laughs> They're back here. Come on, girls. Let's have some fun. I gotta get something going on here. I gotta get this working. Somehow, I have to figure it out. <laughs> Fish jumping everywhere and I'm catching snakes. Uh, Lord help me. Wow, this is nuts. I'm getting my butt handed to me in my newfound salmon asylum. It's crazy. You tried to jump over my fishing line. I, I just, I need to get one of them, that's all. Just one of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna jump on the boat. <laughs> He's gonna. Yeah. Oh, oh man, you see that thing? <sighs> My line stopped, and about a 25 pounder just took off there. Now that, I might have ran over his back or something like that. I don't know. Whatever the case, if that if I hit him in the mouth, that was that would have been the fight of a lifetime right there, man. Ooh. Oh man, come on. Today's hotspot is the back end of Whitby Harbor. The waypoint on your screen will get you there. As you can see from today's show, there's a nice bunch of salmon along with pike that gather there. An alternate area for both species with much easier foot access would be along the East Pier closer to Lake Ontario. There's a beautiful walkway and waterfront area right there. Try casting and retrieving bright colored spoons in different sizes. Vary your retrieve speed until you find something that's working. Flashy inline spinners as well as jointed minnow baits work well here too. If you're a spawn or row angler, you should do well here. Remember to bring a net that's strong enough to handle a 15 to 20 pound pike or a 30 pound plus Chinook. It's surprising just how big some of the fish here are. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com.
So far, my day has been pretty busy and enlightening. The good news is, the sky has opened up with gorgeous autumn sunlight, and I've caught a nice bunch of feisty pike. The bad news is, I've had an insane amount of jacked up Chinook salmon jumping all around my boat. I've hooked into a couple, but lost both. I've decided to finish the evening back at the spot where I dropped my first big bite early in the day. I need redemption. Oh my gosh. Holy moly. <laughs> These are big fish. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's a pike. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's a big northern. Oh my God. I'm sitting here waiting for a salmon, waiting for a salmon. And it's this beauty. Look at the size of this pike. Like it's a nice fish. It's, a, it's the best disappointment ever. My problem is I don't have a leader on, so. I'm gonna be hard pressed to get this fish in the boat, but I can see the lure, which is a good thing. It's a good fish. Come on, oh, no, no. look at it. <laughs> oh, that's a nice pike. I got my drag set quite tight. I'm gonna loosen that off just a bit now. Let's see if I can, I mean, that lure is in perfect position. I'm using this gigantic spinning rod. It's a nine foot carrot stick. Excuse me for getting crazy with this net. A big long rod can make a huge difference. So we'll see what we can do with this guy now. Man, I thought I had a salmon there. That's a pretty good pike, you know. <laughs> you can travel to the far reaches of Northern Ontario for that one, folks. I, I got that one uh, pretty close to home. Look at that northern. <laughs> Man, and he fought good. I thought for sure I had a salmon because that thing just, and it was solid the whole way through. Wow. Look at that, Southern Ontario, folks. Southern Ontario. Wicked. <clears throat> wow. You know what? If I don't get a salmon today, <laughs> I'm okay with this now. <laughs> there we go. It's incredible the amount of fish species that come into all these harbors, not just them in Whitby. You know, they got Port Hope, they got Coburg, they got all the way down Pickering and all the way down to the, to the west. And it's incredible. You could almost catch any species of fish. If it's out there, it could be in here. Very, very cool fishing, very close to home too. Easy to get to. Boat or no boat. This may well be my most productive trip of the year. By throwing baits like a spoon, I know that a huge percentage of predator fish, no matter the species, will at least show interest and in many cases, oh. smash it. Oh, oh man, you see that thing? And that's exactly what happened today. After today's surprising pike action, I jumped into the ram at our production studio in Oshawa and booted a few minutes west on Highway 401 to the Brock Street exit at Whitby. I headed south on Brock Street and then turned west on Victoria Street. Next I turned south on Gordon Street. The public boat launch is a couple hundred yards down Gordon on the left. There's a $10 parking fee at the launch which can be paid in cash using the automated machine or paid online by using a phone app. Don't skimp here as the city will find you if you don't buy a pass. Today's KLP is P for presentation. When fishing areas with different game fish present and you just feel like going fishing with no particular intended species, an angler should consider an all-around presentation like the spoon I was throwing today. Had I decided to fish for salmon only and use roll or spawn, I certainly would have increased my chances at a Chinook, but it would have pretty much obliterated my chances at any other species. Knowing you have a chance of sticking a large moat, small moat, or a big pike, as well as an aggressive salmon with that spoon, you just quadrupled your target species list. To me, that's a no-brainer. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. Stearns, trusted on the water since 1952. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water. 
and Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning provided by Lithium Pros, the one battery you need.